guys, it's DC, and welcome to the Soap Sanctuary, where all soap lovers are welcome, guys. Happy New Year, if I haven't said it right before in other past videos, guys. Happy 2024. This is my character analysis video on Teresa Lopez Fitzgerald from Passions. And I've got my notes right here, guys, so let's just dive right on in, all right? Now, as many of you may or may not know, Teresa was the heroine on Passions. Passions started off contrasting the haves and the have-nots of the town of Harmony. We had the wealthy Crane family, the haves, contrast to the low-class working family, the Lopez Fitzgerald, the have-nots. And of course, we had other families sprinkled in between. We have the Bennetts, the Russells, etc. Right? Now, Teresa would also go on to pretty much be the main protagonist on Passions, which is in a way, was kind of like the first time the soap had an Hispanic character as a main protagonist on their soap. Notice that's a character, not woman, because the actress Lindsay Hartley, who played Teresa on Passions, is not Hispanic in real life. But, guys, sometimes you just gotta take it how you get it, okay? <laughs> now, Teresa was a hopeless romantic, always striving for more. The problem was, when she finally got it, it was never enough for her. But many of us know that when we're not enough in here, it can never be enough out there. Am I right? I know for myself, I was in a past relationship where some past relationships I was told by certain partners that, you know, DC, just seems like it's never enough for you. And the truth be told, the fact of the matter is, they were correct. It was never enough for me. But it's not anything to do with them. It was because I was not doing enough in here. Funny enough, now in my stage of life, I'm so content with like so much less nowadays. And it doesn't mean in the sense of settling, but I'm so much more content in a way where I can find the beauty in the everyday little things. And that's been a blessing for me, right? But Teresa at times wanted her life with Ethan no matter the cost. There was even a time when she contemplated between catching the blackmailer and turning them in to help her brother escape death row for the crimes he didn't commit and have the secret of little Ethan's paternity out or not to and so they keep her secret. The truth, Teresa? What would you do? The blackmailer was found. Would you bring it forward? So that your brother's name could be cleared, so his life could be saved? Or would you be tempted to keep it from telling Ethan that little Ethan is his son? And send my own brother to the death chamber, Mama? What kind of question is that? A difficult one, obviously. No, it's not. Maybe this is something you need to discuss with Father Lonigan in confession. Look, it's like I said before, thank God I don't have to make that decision. There's no decision to make. Of course you'd save your brother's life. Mommy, yeah, I love Louise. Of course I love Louise. And I also love Ethan. I don't want to lose either one of them. It's an impossible situation. But, you know, I, I don't really know why we're even talking about this, because this is idle talk, because that blackmailer has looted everyone for months now. So why should tonight be any different? Don't... But my whole thing was, as if there was, like, even a choice in the situation. Because the sad thing is, I believe that if the roles were reversed, Luis wouldn't have hesitated to try to catch a blackmailer and turn them in if that meant Teresa going free. That's a sad thing. But sometimes obsession in love can make us become selfish where all we see is ourselves. I sometimes wonder if Teresa ever won the best and the highest for Ethan, right? Or maybe did she, as long as it included her. Because most of the times in relationships, we always want the best for our partners. As long as that means we're in the equation, all right? <laughs> but how many people could say I want the best and the highest for the person I'm with, even if that meant them no longer being with me? Because at one point, she knew Ethan was a father of little Ethan. After a little tryst in Rome, and I believe she did not want to lose her shares and status in Crane Industries, and so she married Alistair to be able to keep them, right? But it begs the question, did Teresa really love Ethan or did she love what he came with initially? Especially during the times when he was believed to have been a crane. I think that was part of the allure, let's be honest. She wasn't going out to Tyrone the plumber. <laughs> the lengths she went to keep Ethan were horrendous including impregnating herself to what she believed was Ethan and was Gwen and Ethan's baby to negotiating full custody of little Ethan back. But ultimately the baby she carried turned out to be, it turned out to be both hers and Ethan's, Big Jane. Now Gwen gained custody of Big Jane, 
which I felt was rightfully so because Teresa didn't really want that child, that child with true intentions. She wanted baby Jane as more of a bartering stick, right? And they tried to make Gwen the villain, but honestly, Gwen was just trying to secure the man that was already hers from the jump. But then again, if the person was already truly yours, I mean, would you have to try to secure them? That's how I feel about relationships. If someone is naturally yours, if they're naturally for you, you don't have to force them to lock them down. Trust me, they'll, they'll want to be there. And you always know when people want you based on their actions. Action says it all. <laughs> because like I said before, the Hotchkisses, both Gwen and Rebecca, they weren't as villainous as they seemed, at least not to me, right? They, to me, they didn't start none, but they would always be there to finish it. <laughs> and it's like when they finished it, it came back 24. <laughs> Don't mess with them. <laughs> now, at times we noticed her mother, Pilar, being Teresa's moral center, along with her best friend, Whitney Russell, right? Both, at times, were baffled by Teresa's antics, but supported her nonetheless. Now, what baffled me was a time when Teresa judged Chad up and down for sleeping with Vincent and hiding the fact from Whitney that he was gay. But, yet at the same time, spent years keeping the, the secret that Ethan was little Ethan's father. Even though, in the end, it turned out to be something that Ethan was overjoyed about. She was a super hypocrite. Now, her friendship with Whitney and the chemistry, that translated on screen. The final fact is that Brooke Kerr, who plays Whitney, and, Therese, and Lindsay Hartley, who plays Teresa, are best friends in real life, and that translates on screen when we see it. This is similar to Kristen Alderson, who plays Star, and Brie Underwood, who plays Langston on One Life to Live, right? They're also friends in real life, right? And that also translated on the screen for my One Life to Live fans. To me, these represented the purest parts of Teresa in terms of her relationship with her mother, Pilar, and her friendship with Whitney. Now, even though Teresa would sacrifice Luis on a silver platter, <laughs> Luis was more than just a moral center for Teresa, like the way Pilar and Whitney were. He served as a convicting conscience for Teresa. Luis wasn't too impressed with the Cranes, and he actually despised them from the beginning of the series, even though he eventually ended up in a love triangle with two Crane women, Sheridan and Pree, and, and niece. <laughs> he would save Teresa when necessary, but would never let her forget it. And with her antics, you need one character to just tell it like it is. You're going to need that. Now, Teresa innately believed from the start of the series that Mary and Ethan and becoming Mrs. Ethan Crane was going to solve all her problems. But she soon realized that no problem can be solved if it's always deep within you. Message. <laughs> now, through her romantic trysts with Julian, Alistair, Fox, and Ethan, and I believe Jared was in there too, Teresa always seemed to be her own worst enemy. I mean, she initially kept the paternity of little Ethan a secret to hold on to the crane fortune. But with time, she soon realized that the fortune was not all that it was cracked up to be if it meant sacrificing her love for Ethan. Now, there's so much more that Teresa did in between all of this, but I think I covered, guys, a good scope uh, for today. I do plan to do another character analysis video on the quarter mains. A lot of people have been asking about particular quarter main characters. I figured I'd lump them all cumulatively under an umbrella and just do a whole video on the quarter main family itself. Um, but guys, I will say I spent a lot of time editing these videos. So if you find my content entertaining and or informative, please like and subscribe, guys. And if this is your first time on the channel and you've subscribed, also share it to a fellow soap viewer like yourself, guys. But guys, this has been Soap Sanctuary. Let me know your guys' thoughts about this video in the comments below and what was your take on Teresa during her time on Passions. I'm out. This has been Soap Sanctuary.